This week in high school football. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it. You can hear it in the background, you can feel it in the air. Football season in America is back, and we're going to take you every step of the way. My name is John Garcia Jr. from Sports Illustrated and SI All American, and this is This Week in High School Football. We're going to come to you every single week, locations across the country, giving you the best high school football analysis, college football recruiting, and prospect information as we figure out who is going to be a part of the prestigious SI-99 rankings. What that is, is exactly how it sounds like. The top 99 college football recruits in America as determined by our staff at Sports Illustrated and SI All American. We're here at Clearwater Academy International, one of the top programs in the state of Florida, littered with Division I prospects, several already verbally committed. There's a Minnesota commitment. There's a West Virginia commitment playing right here in front of us. So we're excited to get our first look at high school football this fall. But before we do that, a little bit more about our programming. We will be streaming high school football games every single Friday beginning in September. Again, locations all over the United States with a bit of a focus in the South. You'll catch us in Tampa. You'll catch us in Orlando, Atlanta, Alabama. We'll head out to Texas. Maybe the West Coast gets a taste of this week in high school football. Either way, regardless of where we are, the top information on the top prospects and programs will come to you right here on this program. You'll be able to stream us on YouTube, you listen to us on various podcast platforms, and of course, follow us on Twitter at SI All American. And what we look for with top college football prospects is that projection, the height, the weight, the length, the speed. But where we do it a little bit differently at SI is we're looking for the game as well. We value the floor as much as others may value the ceiling with a top prospect. We want to know what they can do, what they've already been able to do, just as much as we want to know what they can do if they hit certain marks, X, Y, Z, height, weight, speed, etc. So we're looking for the best football players and the best future football players all at the very same time. And we're gonna see a lot of the top candidates for the SI-99 along the way. We just dropped the preseason list and that includes Travis Hunter at number one. He's a wide receiver, he's a corner, he's a return man committed to Florida State out of Collins Hill High School just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Six foot, 175 pounds and is a dynamic athlete Wherever you line them up, we've got them as our number one receiver in America. Florida State has them as their number one corner on their board. So it just gives you a bit of a taste of the type of athlete Travis Hunter is. So when we go see Collins Hill, we'll not only be able to see him, but how about his quarterback, Sam Horn, a number five quarterback in this preseason on SI All-American. Big, strong, athletic, 40-plus touchdowns in helping Collins Hill get to that state championship game in 2020. They fell short that night when it mattered most, so obviously motivated to bounce back in 2021. And we're lining up to see their home opener September 17th as they host Alpharetta High School, another school in the Atlanta area that has produced dozens of top prospects. You may remember Josh Dobbs, who played at Tennessee, now in the NFL as a backup. He's an Alpharetta legend. Collins Hill themselves, much more than Travis Hunter and Sam Horn, the quarterback. They've got young prospects that we're keeping a close eye on as well. Stay tuned for more This Week in High School Football after the break. You're watching American Stories, stories you want to hear. As we continue to talk build up to the 2021 season, how about a quick look at some of the top high school football teams in America? I already mentioned IMG Academy, defending national champions, 8-0 last year. 
and things are sort of looking the same with the Ascenders. Despite a new head coach coming, going from Bobby Acosta to Pepper Johnson, the former NFL and Ohio State great, they've got a loaded roster that begins in the trenches. Tyler Booker, who committed to Alabama in mid-July, anchors one of the top offensive lines in the country. How about the next two levels? at IMG. AJ Duffy, the quarterback, committed to Florida State, originally from California, came down to Florida, and you talk about a chip on his shoulder. This kid didn't get a 2020 high school football season while he made that move, had to sit out, so he's ready to get back going to, to really show us how much he's improved since 2019 when we saw him out in the Golden State. Uh, and the guy he's handing the ball off to, my goodness, Katron Allen. Just committed to Penn State a couple weeks back. Big, physical, think traditional Big Ten running back, running in the cold, downhill, shoulders over the toes, playing behind his pads. That's Katron Allen, an absolute nightmare to defend as a high school linebacker or, God forbid, a secondary prospect trying to slow him down. So IMG loaded everywhere, probably the best high school secondary in the country as well. Top safety, Kamari Wilson, Keon Sab, who's committed to Clemson. Uh, and how about Dalen Everett, another Clemson verbal commitment who has one of the best cornerback resumes in the country. Another chomping at the bit to get back on the field after some lost time. But the last time we saw Everett in action, he had eight interceptions uh, up in Virginia playing high school ball. Now he's down in Florida. IMG will be favored in every game they play. Let's move to the West Coast. We all know modern day St. John Bosco, that huge LA Trinity League rivalry is alive and well. Remember, California played a spring football season, so we got to see modern day and Bosco tangle in April. Kind of weird to say out loud, even though it's been several months, but it was a classic. Modern day won by a couple of scores, but it was really back and forth, blow for blow with these two elite Los Angeles programs. Each of them will be favored in every game they play in, of course, until they play each other at the end of the high school season. Very real possibility. Each of those will go into those games undefeated. Quick notes on some players on those rosters. The Braves are led by their quarterback, Caton Hauser, Michigan State verbal commitment, a kid who's really risen up the rankings over the last 12 months or so. One time Boise State commitment, now he's headed to Michigan State to play for the Spartans after his quick rise. We just got a chance to see him in person at the Elite 11 Finals out in Los Angeles, and Hauser's got a good arm and he's a good athlete as well. Two traits that you need in the modern day quarterback, so Bosco in good shape and always sort of in the game with Hauser as its trigger man. Mateo Uyangalale. If that last name sounds familiar, yes, he is the younger brother of the Clemson starting quarterback, but he's not a quarterback. He's a tight end. He's a defensive end. He's a basketball player. He is 6'6", 255 pounds of you figure out how to stop him. And that's why St. John Bosco will be in the conversation as one of the best teams, not only in California, but certainly nationally. Moving over to modern day, loaded everywhere as usual. We love CJ Williams, a top 10 wide receiver on SI All-American. Uncommitted at this point, Notre Dame, Oregon, many schools vying for his commitment. You probably saw his one-handed catch on Sports Illustrated in the magazine from that spring football matchup with St. John Bosco. He brings a lot to the table, but the guy who really gets modern day going is Relique Brown, a lock for the preseason and probably the postseason SI 99 rankings. He's small but mighty, 5'8", 185 pounds or so. We ranked him as a slot receiver at SI All-American, but he totes the rock for modern day. This is a slashing running back that probably unfairly is getting some comparisons to Reggie Bush, who of course starred at USC and not a shocker, USC, one of the programs trying to get Relic committed, but he's currently verbally pledged to Lincoln Riley and the Oklahoma Sooners, which always seem to do a good job in the state of California. So we gave you Florida, we gave you California. We gotta go to Texas if we're talking high school ball. Austin Westlake, one of the programs to keep a close eye on. All they have leading that charge is the number one quarterback in the country, Cade Klubnick, the Clemson verbal commitment. And a lot of people down at Westlake say he could be the best quarterback to come through that school. Quick history lesson, quarterbacks to come through Austin Westlake, Drew Brees, Super Bowl winner, Nick Foles, Super Bowl winner. The list really goes on and on. Sam Ellinger, who starred at Texas over the last seemingly 10 years, he was an Austin Westlake product as well, but Klubnick 
could have the best resume when all is said and done. Has rarely lost as a starter, and he's coming off of a 2020 season in which they did not suffer anything in that loss column. All they did was score 730 plus points. And the defense isn't bad either at Austin Westlake. They gave up just about eight points per game, which in this day and era of high school football at any level, honestly, is, is quite absurd. But that's what Austin Westlake is bringing back to the table as they are easily the overwhelming favorite to repeat in the state of Texas. But it's not just about Club Nick and that defense. They've got two offensive linemen verbally committed within the Power Five, one to the local Texas Longhorns and another to Indiana. So good luck getting to Club Nick in 2021. I want to dig into a dark horse program. If we're talking about the best high school team in America, few are as balanced, as well coached, or play as tough a schedule as Thompson High School in Alabaster, Alabama. Just outside of the Birmingham area, this school is absolutely loaded. If you go to the defense, Jeremiah Alexander, the Alabama linebacker, verbal commitment, plays there. If you go up front, Peter Woods, one of the top 2023 defensive linemen in America, he plays there too. Okay, let's go to the secondary, right? Tony Mitchell, another elite 2023 with offers from every single school in the country. He's a Thompson Warrior, as is a new addition, Trey Quan Fagans, a 2022 SI99 candidate with nickel potential, safety potential, and corner potential. He's got schools like Alabama, Georgia, and Miami hot after his trail. Let's flip over to offense when you're talking about Thompson. The trigger man, the leader, the guy who held every single record at Thompson High School leading up to that state championship in 2020 is Connor Harrell, an unbelievable decision maker. Think of a point guard. Think Chris Paul, a ball distributor who gets the ball to his playmakers. Uh, following that undefeated run in 2020, he's committed to the University of North Carolina. And as usual, Thompson has a lot of weapons on the outside. Keep an eye on Ryan Peppins. He's a slot receiver, not a big time recruit, but a guy we love at SI All-American. We just named him an honorable mention top slot prospect in these great United States. So everywhere in the country, high school football is rounding up to be back. And we're excited to cover the top programs and well beyond for you right here at SI All-American and Friday Night Football. In the spirit of the return of high school football, a little bit more about what we're doing at Friday Night Football. Not only will we be traveling and streaming big time high school games with big time high school prospects all over this great country. We want to take you inside these communities, inside the buildup to games, whether it's the home opener for Collins Hill High School, drumming up that excitement with the students, with the parents, the cheerleaders. How about the bands? Let's get them back on the field so we can celebrate the return of high school ball together. And we want you to be a part of our community as well. Follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Throw us questions. Questions. We would love to answer your questions and see where you stand in talking about the best high school players, high school programs, and everything in between. John Garcia, Jr., SI All-American and Friday Night Football here at Clearwater Academy International. Talking high school football, as you can tell, the season is officially underway, at least the preseason and practice, really where games are won. So we're going to take you from preseason practice all the way to these state championship games on Friday Night Football and, of course, on our podcast this week in high school football. It's good to see these guys out here getting after it on a hot day, you know, full gear in late July. I mean, that's just what it's about. This is where you actually win these games, the conditioning, uh, the reps, the competitiveness. I mean, look at the energy. That's that's what makes a good high school football team. And, and few schools in this state have produced the Division One prospects that CAI has. You're talking schools all over the country, Power Five and, and beyond. Some of the best schools in the country have recruited down here in recent years. Clemson wide receiver Ajoa Joe is an alum. Uh, Kiki Mesador, who was probably the best pass rushing freshman in the Big 12 at West Virginia. Jared Wayne was a great receiver at Pitt for a while. He's a product here. I mean, Indiana's resurgence has a lot to do with this program. Uh, Kervin's Bonhomme's a big time linebacker. Uh, they've, they've signed multiple prospects from here. So uh, it's just exciting to be back out and see kind of the next wave. That's Dylan Vigette on the reception. He's one of the faster prospects 
on this team. Saw him score three touchdowns last year against Chaminade Madonna, which is a state championship program uh, out of Broward County in South Florida. Uh, he's due for a big year as, as probably the go-to guy for Luca Stanzani, the quarterback. Stanzani's 10,000 plus yards into his varsity production, so he'll have some unofficial records to his name. But how about the backup chucking it deep, though? <laughs> this time of year where all that communication is built, that, that trust, that rapport, uh, finding the terms that make the most sense for your, your team, the call signs, the, the checks, the colors. A lot of times you let the players get involved with that so that it's something that they take ownership of, uh, spend more time on learning. What's unique about this program this time of the year is a lot of these kids who move from Canada or other parts of the country to play here, they're getting that quick education on what the Florida sun is, is really like. I was about to break on that ball myself. Fire back to my all-conference days, you know? <laughs> Bring my ring out, you know? You know? Corey Yeoman, probably the tone setter for the defense, willing to get after it pre and post snap, which is good. You need that. You need that sort of alpha mentality, personality. There's Dylan again, expecting a big year out of that kid. Really shocked he doesn't have a lot of uh, recruiting attention at this point, as productive as it gets in this state. A little team action, 11 on 11. This program's always gonna throw the ball a lot. Really, really challenge the defense, both mentally and physically, just stretching that thing east-west and, and, and forcing the defense to be athletic and reactive, which at the high school level is really hard to deal with. I think the difference for them this year is their line. I mean, the pockets are going to be clean for Luca, and he can he can deliver the football with some excitement as, as you hear the whole team reflective of that point. Uh, his protection will be great this year. Lucas Simmons, 55. I mean, that's as good a, a line prospect as we'll see nationally, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, 295 pounds. Just uh, the projected left tackle that you would sculpt out of a dictionary. A lot of college coaches would, would tell you that, that he's, he's built, born for this position. And he's got the bloodlines too. His dad played at Oklahoma. And uh, he was raised in Sweden though, so it makes it unique. Came over here from Sweden to, to challenge himself a little bit more and has picked up a bunch of scholarships along the way. And my goodness, you can see why. Uh, carrying 300 pounds the way he does is about as good as it gets. Big fan of 99 as well, Isaiah Hastings. He's a kid that came down in June when the camp world opened back up and had a chance to perform in front of many, many college coaches. I think he picked up seven offers in one day at one camp. That's how strong he is. I just see him putting pressure on the quarterback right there. Uh, 6'3", 6'4", 290 or so just a problem to deal with. So Clearwater is looking good up front on both lines. But the key here is of course Stanzani, the quarterback. Four year varsity starter, just experienced. You see him, you see him manipulate his arm angle to fit the ball through a small crease. Wasn't the best protection that time, but still found a way to not take a sack. Just a veteran, smart presence. Burton, right? 
Eric Burton's another elite prospect on this team, lining up as an edge rusher with the yellow gloves. Really quick off the line of scrimmage. Part of the reason why he's committed to West Virginia. Again, power five prospects all over the place. You see the frame, 6'4", 6'5", about 220 pounds. He'll, he'll weigh a little bit more when he gets to West Virginia, for sure. But the foundation is there. That first step is just hard to duplicate, hard to, to combat. So this matchup between him and, and Lucas Simmons is pretty much why we come to these practices. We want to see these two getting after it. So Burton won the last rep. Simmons wins this rep. So that's the, that's the sign of competitiveness and balance. You want that in your team. It makes everybody better. See, Stanzani had an unblocked man, found his outlet receiver, able to move the chains and get a first down. That's just hard to ask of a high school quarterback, but something that he's done time and time again. Again, 10,000 yards is not something you can really manufacture without a lot of great experience, talent, and, and really growth. I think he's going to have maybe his best year in 2021. Again, this, this team won't, won't lose many, won't, won't lose many games when it comes to talent. Love the tempo at these practices, as everyone else realizes that they're in the way like we were. <laughs> Love the tempo at these practices. It really promotes a game day-like atmosphere. Throw in the heat, throw in the, the fatigue, and, and it makes for a real simulation of, of what these kids are going to see on Friday nights in the fall. That's what it's about at the end of the day. It might not be 100 degrees like it is today, but it'll be pretty close with their schedule. Very, uh, very south southern laden in terms of where they're going to be so you just wonder about these linemen you know lucas simmons and his stance you already can see him getting a little little fatigued and allowing a little bit more pressure so those are the things that every school is trying to hammer out in july and august ahead of uh, ahead of their openers sample of communication and everyone needing to be on the same page. You see what the defense lines up like and you make an adjustment based off of that alignment. So clearly they saw something on the right side, single coverage, and it was there. Good coverage on the defense. But you see, you see kind of the wheels turning between quarterback and coach and between Stanzani and Jesse Chinchar. That's, that's about as close as you'll find in our business in terms of a relationship between coach and quarterback. It's really could be for a kid like Luca, that could be the difference between the scholarship offer and not that benefit of the doubt given from, from the high school coach that is respected by many. Looks like we got some man coverage. I can see them going deep on this one. Letting it go. There you go. Nostradamus on the microphone. Stay tuned for more This Week in High School Football after the break. Four years from now, you're going to wish right. you, you had signed this kid. Uh you're watching American Stories, stories you want to hear. John Garcia Jr. here with Lucas Stanzani, the starting quarterback at CAI. Headed into your senior year, yeah. your last ride, as they say, it's got to be exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's a crazy, crazy experience. Just um, going through this program for my fifth year since an eighth grader. Um, I remember Jesse always telling the seniors, like, this is your year, and now actually experiencing that, it's wild. And then preparing in this Florida heat, you know, how important is that to get ready for the season? How many? quote unquote battles and games are won right here in the practice field? Uh, I mean, it's every day you gotta work. You're gonna be wet every day going into the car. Um, <laughs> it's something like no other. Like, it, it thins your blood, especially because so many guys are from up north. Um, it's really hard to get used to. You almost don't get used to it. Um, it's really tough. How much more pressure does that put on a, a leader like you getting everyone up to speed when it's not a program that has 
continuity from a young age and you have to get kids up to speed pretty much right when they get here. How much more pressure does that put on you or is that something you embrace? Uh, it's a lot. I embrace it for sure. Jesse does an outstanding job. Uh, the guys are all great guys. They all buy into our culture. Uh, we say Ohana means family. Uh, everybody really comes together pretty well as a team every year. Last question here before you get back to practice. Expectations for 2021. What should we know? Want to know, have fun, and win a championship. Let's go back out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's another year more mature, seasoned. Is that Hastings? No, 50, I don't know that. That's the punter. He also punts. I like what Luca said. You'll be wet getting into the car every day after practice here. That's that's how it should be when you work. Another great deep ball from Stanzani. You kind of got the whole skill set on that one. You got the bad snap that he handled, moving to his weak side to avoid the rush and delivering a ball across his body down the field 45 yards. Hard to do at the pro level. This is a high schooler doing things like that. Okay. You see the fatigue setting in. There we go. Tensions flaring a little bit, the mark of a good team. Always got to remind yourself that these are teenagers. Egos on the line, reputations on the line. I've never been a part of a good team that didn't have some July and August scraps. You want that competitiveness to a degree. There's always a line, but you got to flirt with that line. This is not a passive game so some of that aggression should translate beyond your responsibility in a given play you should take it personally and it usually makes the next rep pretty exciting <laughs> John Garcia Jr. here with Isaiah Hastings one of the top prospects at Clearwater Academy International big interior defensive lineman you got some edge talent as well What's it been like this preseason just getting after it in this Florida sun? You know, it's been great. You know, it's been a grind so far. We've been grinding almost every day, training camp, uh, get a lift in in the morning, and then we have practice in between. You've been getting after it all summer. I remember when June came and all these camps opened back up. You go to the Mercer camp. You picked up, like, what, seven offers in a 24-hour period. What did you do to show these Division One coaches what you got? You know, I just uh, stuck with what I'm good at, my, my talents, you know, uh, all the hard work in the off season and going to, you know, improving my explosiveness and my hands. You know, I just used that, was confident, staying calm, cool, and collected, and uh, eventually um, I performed. So you did well at the camps. Now we're in preseason camp. But soon we'll be in that first game day vibes, the first time you'll wear the Knights uniform for a Friday night varsity game. What will that be like for you? you know, it'll, be, it'll be great. It'll be amazing. You know, it's my first snap and like, Two years, last time I played was in my sophomore season. So now I finally get to show, you know, improve myself on the field in my senior season. Last question, what does this opportunity mean for you as a Canadian to come down to the United States, you know, where obviously the game is, is uber important and special to us. What does it mean to sort of represent uh, where the game is going globally, internationally, and, and that uh, love and reach for football expanding? You know, it's been a blessing, you know, Coach Jesse, uh, gave us an opportunity, you know, to play in Florida, one of the top states in uh, for football, you know, and Canadians like me, like, you know, showcasing our talents, and I kind of get the chance to showcase our talents against Americans, so it's great. It's a blessing. All right. A lot of excitement here at CAI. He just got off the practice field, and he's getting after it with the interviews as well. Sharp Cat, Isaiah Hastings, remember that name. Dylan Jette, one of the top prospects here at Clearwater Academy International, wide receiver, slot receiver, return man. Anything else I'm missing? 
DB, whatever. <laughs> DB, whatever he needs to do to make place for CAI. One of the more unique stories, right? You're from Montreal originally, didn't speak great English when you came down here a year or two ago. What's that been like, adjusting not only to a new country and, and the most competitive sport in this country, but learning a new language on top of that? I think I think it was great. I wasn't able to like speak fully with someone. Like it's been one year and like I've been doing school and talking to my let's say family, to my players. It's just been great because everyone understand that you know we have a lot of uh, people that came from Montreal or French part. So you know they've been easy on us and just help us speak. You know, it's been good. And then as you adjust to the game itself, what are some of the thoughts of, of American football up in Canada and how much more have you learned about it obviously since you came down? I've learned a lot of things here. It's like, it's different because in Canada it's like, it's hockey. You know, in Canada they all play hockey. So I came here because I want to play football because it's not as big as here. So when I came here it's just too big for us. It's like, everything is just focused on football. And you know, when I went to Syracuse, I was in like, I came in the stadium, I was like, it's not possible, it's not, you know, you, can, you can't see that in Canada. So it was just great and yeah. Still looking for a college home, but you got the whole 2021 season ahead of you. How excited are you to get out on the field and prove your worth as, as a FBS or FCS prospect? Um, it's great. I'm, I'm looking forward to make plays and just play football. It's, I'm always happy to play football. So. If somebody watching has not seen one rep of you in action, what will they see if they want to scout you, Dylan? Um, see my route running, my separation. I think I have one of the best separation in the United States. And great ball skills. I can't catch one of the so, yeah. Big time, power five commitments and sleepers alike here at CAI. Dylan's one of the best. Thank you. John Garcia Jr. here with an ego check, standing next to the six foot seven Lucas Simmons, just a rising high school junior in the class of 2023. And you just moved to the United States from Sweden. Let's start there. I mean, that is tough for anybody to do, much less a teenager. What has that been like? I mean, it's been, I thought it would be a lot more difficult than it was. The coaches here has really been taking me in. And I felt like I got good preparation by living, kind of taking more responsibility from my old school at Rig Academy. So I've been living by myself and kind of cooking and stuff. So it feel, it's still another country, but I have had a little easier way just kind of getting situated. Tell me what football is like in Sweden, American football. I mean, you, you had a bit of, of an advantage. Your father played at Oklahoma, so you, you knew how important the game was, particularly in this country. But what is sort of the status of American football uh, in Europe and in Sweden particularly? Uh, I would say it's kind of are very underrated, to be honest. I mean, we have players that do it just for fun, same as here. But the people that take it really seriously, I don't think really get the type of credit they deserve. Gotcha. So you went on this big bus tour right before you started practicing with the Knights. You picked up a bunch of scholarship offers. You got the Oklahoma offer like dad, which is which is a storyline that a lot of recruiting fans are following. But you saw a lot of other great campuses, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson. What is it like seeing these big time college football programs up close and personal? I mean, it's a blessing. If somebody would have told me a year ago, like you're going to go and see 16 of the biggest schools in the States, I'll just laugh and say like, nah, you're joking. What was the coolest thing you saw visiting all those great places? Just kind of, I knew like the facilities were going to be crazy just on YouTube, but you're seeing that I kind of painted the coaches as being crazy people that don't really like our people, just coaches. But then meeting them in person, like they're just like regular people with different names, like coaches and stuff. Lucas, you're one of the top young prospects at your position, offensive tackle in the country. What should we look forward to you in your first year of football here in the States? I mean, I'm excited. I mean, it feels really good to be here with all the coaches and the players. I feel we're getting a really good team together. It feels like a really good, like we're getting this connection, getting bigger and bigger every day. So I think it's going to be really good. Will you be better than dad? Yeah, I think so. That's all you need to know. <laughs> John Garcia Jr. here with Jesse Chinchar, head coach of Clearwater Academy International, despite the fly on my face. Jesse, 2021 season, we're, we're building towards it. Yeah. The preparation has begun as the fly touches yours as well. What's the excitement level like to, to be back, to be celebrating the return? Oh, it's got to be 10 out of 10. I mean, just the fact that we're back, you know, COVID is knock on wood behind us. And, you know, we got a good group of kids. You know, I think the excitement level to turn around what happened last year, what we feel like is a fluke, you know, the opportunity to go out and, and prove that I think is, is fun. You know, the fact that we 
get to compete against a, a big time schedule, have kids from all around the world coming here to, to do this thing with us, it's, it's definitely 10 out of 10. We've got some great returning players like Lucas Stanzani, your quarterback, who you guys have a great rapport with. But like you said, a lot of yeah. new international players. How tough is it to acclimate international players to the American game with the type of schedule you guys play? Yeah. It's the toughest thing that we do without the continuity. If we were going to get them in ninth grade and we'd have four years with them, it'd be no problem. But, you know, we're going into the season with... 25 plus new guys that have never played with us before and they've never played football in America before. So not only do they need to learn a whole new system, they need to learn a whole new school, new teammates, new coaches, new everything. And so you hit the nail on the head. That's definitely the biggest challenge that we have, but I think it's going well so far. How mature does a prospect have to be to, to move away from home or another country yeah. to, to a competitive place like this to, to play for you? Yeah, I think you have to be super mature. I mean, the fact that you are leaving your family, your friends, your siblings, your everything that you know to go do this, I mean, it truly shows how much you care about the game. I think it shows the care, the love for the game, and then the, like you said, the, the dedication and, and the maturity. It's, it's definitely not an easy thing to do. On the other side of it, it's translated very well. You have dozens of prospects playing at big time colleges from national champs all the way on down, what have college coaches told you about your kids and, and just the international game itself? What does it say that they can come here and accomplish something like that? Yeah, I mean, I think that they've been really impressed and that was one of my big takeaways is they are so happy that they came here and played with us. They feel like the development that they got in the one season, two seasons has just been tremendous and you see those guys having an immediate impact. I mean, you see Akeem Mesador, true freshman All-American, you see CO, you see DK, these guys doing well early. Um, and I think that that's something that they you know, I think we'll at least attest to is exceeded their expectations. They see international and they think, hey, it's going to take time, but we got a big a big frame here. And, and they, they show up and they handle business. And I think it's been cool. Lastly, 2021 season, you already mentioned that 2020 was a bit of a fluke. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of circumstances yeah. surrounding that season. You guys battled a ton of injuries as well. Uh, why should we expect more this fall? Yeah, I mean, the one thing is if we're healthy, I think we got a chance against anybody. And I think we weren't last year, and I think that's something that you kind of keep behind closed doors for the most part, and people don't really get to see. So I think the health first and foremost, but I think the talent that we have coming back is, you know, will rival the most talented team that we've ever had. And then the camaraderie that these kids have built in a week has been, you know, second and none. Like these kids really, truly care about each other. You see, you know, some of the things that they've done at Indiana with how, how much that culture has taken place. Like, our guys have really bought in, into that type of thing as well, which is, I think, anytime you can do that in a week from guys from, I mean, we got guys from Sweden, you know, uh, we got guys from Germany, freaking Canada, we got guys from Mozambique, Africa, and these guys have already become a tight knit family. I think that's probably been my most impressive thing. So I think that is going to be a big part of how we respond. Last couple questions. Big stage, big yeah. platform for some of the sleepers maybe on mm -hmm. your roster. You've got a lot of Power 5 FBS kids, yeah. but some looking to get to that point, particularly yeah. Lucas Stanzani yeah. uh, as well as Dylan Jete, the receiver. Yeah. Uh, what do those guys need to do this fall to sort of cement their status as legitimate scholarship players? I think they need to go into the biggest games that we have and dominate. You know, they need to line up against somebody who people think are better than them and outperform them, period. You know, I think that they've proven it so far. But I think to do it on that stage and consistently this year, just game after game, senior year, I think that's what they need to do to you know, kind of rise to that level. To me, these are kids who can play anywhere. I mean, they're so, so good. And if size weren't you know, an issue for some people, they'd probably have more next to their name. But I think that they're going to prove why I said that this year. Jesse's very humble in his approach, but look, this guy sent about as many kids D1 out of the state of Florida as, as some of the top programs that you've heard many, many more things about than CAI. So we're expecting a big year out of them as well. So we made it not only to the start of the high school football season, but we made it to the end of the first ever episode of This Week in High School Football. We very much look forward to your reactions. Please tweet at us comment uh, down in the comment section and let us know what you think, what you'd like to see. We're going to hit the road outside of Central Florida to see the best of the best practices, games, everything in between. So we hope you'll follow along in our journey and we'll see you next week for the next This Week in High School Football. Huh. Huh. Bad boy. Bad boy. Introduce my
Myself, they call me J-O, A to the easy E and Know that we undefeated, y'all are beneath them speeds Just trying to air a grievance But his lines are overhead, better check the air for clearance Call the tower, this is our clear to heat the air apparent uh -huh. Really, I've never been better yeah. Legacy, this is forever huh. All the more times I've been seven I'm raising the bar, you can go ahead and measure yeah. Think about time for a toast yeah. Time that we welcome the go yeah. Yo, we're just leaving, I think about time that somebody go get on that coat You know I got all that answer, come back in, what you call that answer?